You'd have thought in a world of crummy electric cars and rubbish crossovers that the car enthusiast community would be ecstatic at the announcement of a new Clio RS. But many aren't. They're angry because Renault has made big changes to the RS recipe by adding a turbocharger and ditching the manual gearbox. To them, that's like someone fitting breasts and stiletto heels to Mike Tyson. So is the new Renault Clio RS EDC better, worse, or just a different car to its predecessor? The year 2013 appears to be a year of controversy. We have two significant arrivals in the sports car segment at very different price points that are changing the way that we have to operate and interact with fast cars. The first one was revealed earlier this year and I'm in it now. It's the new Clio Renault Sport 200. This is a car that uses a turbocharger and doesn't have three pedals and a gear lever. It's got paddles instead. I've just spent a day driving in this car and my thoughts are jumbled in my head. So I'm gonna try and blurt a few of them out to you. Now, first of all, I want to approach this as a curmudgeonly old sod who doesn't like the fact that the Clio RS is no longer manual. It is a shame. Something has been lost. You know that, it just has, because you don't have as much control over the vehicle. You're not as busy. Your left foot gets plonked on the rest here, unless you want the left foot brake, and you go ahead and use the paddles. At some point, though, one has to get over that. And once I have got over that, I want to shift my point of reference to being 20-something again. What a lovely thought. Young, a bit more hair, a bit more attractive, a bit funnier, a bit less gnarled and jaded. And at that point, I wonder whether this isn't actually quite a clever car. Because if I was that age, I'd be pretty excited by a car that had 200 horsepower, 177 foot-pound of torque, turbocharged motor, and I had paddles to pretend I was like a racing driver. And this car does shift gear very, very quickly and there's lots of funky stuff going on. I personally don't care about having buttons to go into RS drive and stuff like that, but maybe young people do. Maybe people like me need to understand that Renault has broadened the appeal of this car. And yes, it might alienate some of the hardcore people that want to have a manual gearbox and lowered everything and an engine that screams out to 8,000 RPM, but for everyone it loses, maybe it'll gain two new ones with this car. It's a gamble, but they might be onto something. How does it drive? To me, it drives really very well. On the road, the car is much more comfortable. It has these new hydraulically valve dampers that add a progression to the damping, which means that it's much, much more comfortable. I mean, me, 50% better. A car doesn't have to be all bouncy and jarry and stiff to actually be controlled and very agile on the road. And this proves why. It doesn't have the clever double knuckle suspension anymore, just a normal strut up front, but it's got less damping in it. Feels like less spring rate as well and it's very agile. I'm driving along a straight road now, so I can't really demonstrate it to you, but have a look over my shoulder now when I was on a windy road, and you'll see what I mean. Steering, 2.6 turns, electric, yes, quite light, lacking feel, but in RS drive, when you press the button to the first stage, you go into sport mode, you get heavier steering, and you get better throttle response, and you get a slightly quicker gear change. If you press the button again and hold it down, you get race mode, which takes all the ESP away, genuinely away as well, as we might be able to show you on the track in a minute. You get a faster throttle response and you get an even faster gear change, I think 150 milliseconds. So it really does feel like you're whapping up through the gears. Paddles are made of aluminium. They do not feel cheap and tacky. They feel more expensive than many a prestige German car that does the same thing. And after a while, I found myself getting into a rhythm with this car and the test of a hot hatchback is this. Did I start driving it like a bit of a bell end after a while? Yes, I did. I found myself driving a bit too quickly. That's what hot hatches do to you. When they get under your skin, you don't realize it. You just start pushing a bit. I always do. I drive these things quicker than I do any supercar because they're that type of vehicle. They're effervescent. They get under your skin. So in that respect, I respond to it like I do a hot hatch points of disappointment, body and wide. It's not a bad looking car, but to me, Clio now should be a bit different to a standard Clio, or Clio RS, sorry, should be a bit different to a standard Clio. And this one just looks like a normal Clio on some slightly bigger wheels, and that's about it. It's not a bad looking car, but it's got no great excitement, but then I've not driven the Fiesta. To me, it looks pretty ordinary as well. Throttle response is really quite sharp. This is effectively that little Nismo 1.6 engine. 
with not that much boost on it. Okay, it's got about 18 foot pounds of torque more than the outgoing car, but that comes in at 1500 RPM, so it's low. There's a bit of a mismatch between the torque delivery and the gear ratios, but if you keep on it, it's quick and it stays in there, and you do feel like you're in a little racing car, bap, 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 through the gears. Third gear is quite short, fourth gear is quite long. Don't know why they've done that. It must be to do with MPG and some Euro cycle. But even so, you do feel like you're in quite a frenetic car. I like it. And the extra torque on the road from the turbo motor, 1.6 as opposed to the last two litre normally aspirated, makes this quite a bit quicker on the road. It just drags you out of turns and it goes for it. 177 foot-pounds of torque, is that enough? I think it is. Car weighs just over 1,200 kilograms wet. So it's quite a big box but it's no heavier than the outgoing car, even though it's got this dual clutch gearbox, which is obviously much heavier than a manual transmission. This double clutch is made by Gatrag and it's a dry clutch. So obviously not so much fluid lying around. That means it's lighter and allegedly means it can shift faster. The more I drive this car, the more I like it, the more I feel on the road. You know what? I could live without having a manual gearbox. I'm having a lot of fun here. And also one thing I've done today quite a bit is use the old gear lever down here because they've made it the right way around. So push forward, you go down a gear, come back, you go up a gear. And I found myself doing that to pretend I'm a bit of a kind of Ragnotti style driver. You go down, it blips down, you get a pop on the throttle and away you go. You can only judge it by the way that you respond to it as a driver. And I'm enjoying it. The Clio is a five door only but the rear doors are very cleverly hidden and rear legroom is fine, so long as the driver is very short and the rear passenger is equally tiny. They've tried hard with the cabin and there's plenty of red stitching and general sportiness. The seats are a bit undercooked for a French hot hatch though, but you still know you're in something special. It's even got an RS button. There's also the option of RS Monitor 2.0 catchy name that, which can time standing starts, show real time power and torque readouts and monitors a whole range of parameters just like a race data system. It can even, through the hi-fi speakers, make the Clio sound like an old Gordini or even a Nissan GTR, which is a bit odd actually. You can add individual race circuits and use it to get proper lap time data too, which incidentally is where we're headed now in a cup chassis version. This is Guardic's circuit, built and owned by a rather nice Englishman. It's an interesting place, very technical, perfect for a little hot hatchback. So now we're in the cup chassis car. Cup chassis means, as he tries not to overshoot this rather technical third gear bend, cup chassis means 27% stiffer spring at the front, 20% stiffer at the back, but actually overall the chassis is only 15% stiffer across both axles. We're three millimetres lower and we've got the Dunlop Sport Max tyre because we're on the 18 inch wheel, okay? We'll call that out. What's this car like on the circuit then? I think it's quite clever. That long wheel travel and suppleness means it's good over the bumps. Back off a bit and it will allow the tail to swing around. Kiss the brake and you get a little bit more. There is some understeer, but then it's front wheel drive, what do you expect? Motor strong, but of course being a circuit, you don't really feel the advantage of that torque because you get through the torque band so quickly, so it does feel a little bit breathless. It's less exciting on the circuit than the old motor was because it's not screaming out at the top end. And of course, the plus side is I've got this really fast gear change, and it is. That's rapid, and it'll do little parts as well on part throttle. On the road, I didn't think the car needed a dip at all, but funnily enough, on the circuit, there are a couple of places where it would be quite nice to have a locker in it. Fundamentally, the car wants to understeer, obviously. You can neutralise it on a trailing throttle and you can take a bit more out of it as well by just kissing the brake. But you've got to be careful because if you kiss that brake too hard, you will end up, I think, with a big rotation on your hands. What I'm finding really impressive is the way that it handles the curves. I can smack it over these curves so really, really hard. That's quite 
quite long and understeery, but it's front driven. Short of having a locker in the car, I don't quite know how you get rid of that understeer in a front wheel drive car. Am I having less fun here because I've not got a manual gear change? I've got less to do, I'll give you that. I have got less to do. Does that equate to less fun? I'm not sure that equates to less fun or not. I still think that I'm enjoying myself, and I suppose any racing driver's argument would be I've got more time to concentrate on my line and what I'm doing with the car because I'm not messing around with the lever down here. OK, the hardcore types are going to be a bit disappointed by this car. It just doesn't have the same tear-away character as the old 200 Cup. But there are many positives. First, those speed freaks will have a field day tuning this engine. It'll go to 250 horsepower quite easily, at which point I suspect it might become something of a cult. Personally, I love the breadth of ability on the road. The RS is now a much more usable car. I just wish it looked more different to a standard Clio, and thinking about my time driving it now, I think they've been quite conservative with the gearbox mapping on downshifts. Yes, you can simply hold the paddle and it'll multiple downshift, but there is a slight delay. Upshifts in race mode are terrific though. And remember, when the last Clio 197 was launched, people said it had gone soft. But over time, Renault put plenty of lead in its pencil. There's space for that to happen again. But as a road car, I like it as it is.